Welcome to episode 157 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly, and today I'm going to help so many of you not be so frustrated about not making enough progress on your vision. We're making our way through the fog of life, and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So this is kicking off year number four of this podcast. And I've been in a little bit of an introspective mood lately, wrestling through what I want this next season of my professional life to be, and even my personal life. I'm the kind of person that gets really frustrated over not making progress fast enough. I don't know how many of you can relate to that. And really, it's indicative of the fact that I always have so many ideas. And maybe it's like the curse of an entrepreneur. I have so many ideas. I see ways to iterate in a better way. I synthesize things like organizations or content or groups of people. I, I, it all comes together really quickly in my mind. And then it gets really frustrating when I, I have too many things going. I don't feel like I get traction on any of them sometimes. And there's a pastor in New York City. His name is Tim Keller, and he wrote a book called Every Good Endeavor. And that book first introduced me to another book in its preface by none other than the author of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, J.R.R. Tolkien. And the book that I read, it was talking about how that the work that we do is actually connected to a greater purpose. And this book, you know, written by a Christian pastor, talking about how God provides for his creation through the work of people, all people all people and the work and the things that they're doing that, that are productive, God's working through all that stuff to provide for everyone else. And so the story that he talked about that Tolkien wrote was this. It's called Leaf by Niggle, N-I-G-G-L-E. And I actually had to get this book from England because they don't print it in the U.S. Tolkien was Brit. And here's the story. So we all know about the Lord of the Rings trilogy and The Hobbit and how that was just such a, a masterfully created world and story. Well, Tolkien had the idea to write that thing, that whole trilogy, that whole world and ecosystem. And he knew that he first had to do a lot of work and a lot of writing to basically write the backstory for the story because there's all types of civilizations and there's all types of characters and the elves and the dwarves and the princes and the ring and the evil people. And so he had all these different cultures he had to develop out so that he could write a cohesive story that actually stayed true throughout the, the storyline. He got to work doing that. And then in the interim, so we're talking late 30s, early 40s, and as you know, that's when World War II was firing right up. And living in England, the friction and the tension of that was spilling out of the rest of Europe. And now England is in the fight. England is being bombed. Streets are burning. And Tolkien thought, I will never finish. And he got really sad and depressed because he didn't even know if he would survive as a civilian at that point. He wasn't even in the military. And so one night he had a dream and he woke up and he felt immediately better. And he was like, that's the answer. And it was actually this story. He got up and wrote it down immediately. And so the, the word niggle is actually means to like move forward in a kind of a meandering way and not, it's, it's not useless way, but it's like a, a way that never really gets much done. So let me give you the premise of the book. So niggle is the main character in the book and he's an artist and he has a vision for a beautiful work of art. It's a painting and it starts with this tiny drop of rain that's on a leaf that is on this beautiful branch, that's on this beautiful tree, that's sitting in the middle of a beautiful landscape. And then there's a big field behind it, and then there's a mountain range behind that, and then there's this amazing sky, and he thinks, I have to paint this vision. So he buys an apartment, it's got like a 15-foot wall in it, and he's gonna put his masterpiece on this wall. And he buys this, he gets to work, and every day, day in and day out, he pursues this vision. And some days, he works on it more than other days, and some days he feels like he made no progress at all, and some days he feels like he made great progress. And the thing is about Niggle is that he's a really kind man, and he's also he's a little bit of a recluse, a little artist recluse, but he's a, he's a good man. And so his neighbor's always asking him for favors, and he's always saying yes, sometimes reluctantly yes, but he says yes. And one day, his, he's working on his painting, and his neighbor's wife is very sick, and his neighbor asks him to go to the pharmacy and pick up her medication. So reluctantly, but in line with his personality, he says yes, and he goes out in the cold rain to get this medication, brings it back, and at that time, he actually gets sick as a result of that. And then 
someone shows up has his, at his door, man with a car saying, well, I have to take you now on the journey that we all must go on. And in the book, that journey represents death. We all have to do it. At some point, it's going to come knocking for us and we all have to go. And the man was there to take him to the train that would take him into, you know, representatively of the afterlife. And he was so distraught because he looked at his wall that he had been working on. And all he got done, actually, was one dewdrop on one leaf. And that's it. After all that time and after all that work. And so saddened, distracted, or distraught, he got in the car and got on the train that's going to take him to the afterlife. And there's a whole conversation that goes on on the train, but we're not, we don't have time for that. So the train takes him into the afterlife, and he's just like, I can't believe that's all I got done. And he get train stops, and he knew it was his. He gets out of the stop, and he looks up, and he sees his tree in real tangible form, the actual tree that he visualized. It's actually there. And it's in the field that he visualized. It's more beautiful than he imagined. And then he sees behind it the mountain range, and he looks up and he sees the beautiful sky that he was going to work on. And he looks at it, overwhelmed with emotion. And he raises his hands and he says, it was a gift, meaning that the vision for what was now real is a gift. Meaning that one day, those things will be real. And that tree was real. And all of that to say, that's how Tolkien was able to keep working because he made sense all of a sudden. He got clarity and perspective that the pursuit of the vision was actually the gift, that even if he didn't finish it, he still could partake in the blessing of the gift. And that is where we are as people who are working towards someone, entrepreneurs and visionaries, people who want to serve other people and build things and raise families that are healthy and that do great things in the future. It can get really tedious in the middle, can it? It can get really tedious when things go wrong and we feel like we're taking one step forward and then two steps back or that the vision's coming so fast I can't actually make any progress on it. And yes, there are things we can do with our efficiencies, and I think that the internet's full of advice on how to be more efficient, but there's not a lot of advice on how to appreciate and lean into the gift that you've been given today. I don't know if I'm going to make it home in the car ride from recording this podcast or not. My wife hates it when I say stuff like that, but it's so true. This may be the last piece of content I ever make, and if that's the case, guess what? I've never finished. I never, never finished the podcast series. I've never finished growing the business. I never finished seeing my kids grow up and raise and get married and have grandchildren. I never finished. But guess what? Every day, every action, every opportunity to create, to love, and to cultivate, and to serve, and the desire to do those things is actually the gift. Imagine if we went through our lives with that understanding. We wake up sometimes and it's, we're tired in the morning and we're like, oh, I'm so tired. You woke up. That you woke up, like there's the gift. And so I wanted to share that perspective with you today because it's been top of my mind, top of my heart, going into this next season, this next decade, this next year of the podcast, next decade of my career. Like, let's let's be honest, like I'm, I'm 40, I'm going to turn 42 next month, right? It's, mm, it's not winding down, but it's definitely not just getting started. I want to move forward with the enjoyment and the appreciation that the vision is the gift, and I want you to do it too. Not because I want to tell you what to do, because I want you to enjoy the fulfillment of the day you've been given today. And I want you to find purpose in the day you've been given today. So thanks for spending a few minutes with me here today. I hope this story inspired you like it inspired me, and I hope through, through our interaction, we can get more perspective and more clarity together so we can live the vision so we can pursue that vision that's over the horizon, knowing we'll never really get there, but that the march toward that horizon is worth it. For me, God's put me here to serve other people, to serve you, to serve my family. And I need to remember that every day as I get to create and serve and grow and do business. I want you to remember that too. Glad we can remember it together. And until next week, I hope you find fulfillment in the vision that is the gift. Histories made in the moments Heroes collide, it's all